It's time to get rid of this old water tank. So it's out with the old, in with the new. We're gonna put a hybrid heat pump water tank in here. So the very first thing I need to do is turn the hot water off, going in. Then I'm gonna take a hose, hook it up at the bottom here. And then open this valve, drain all this water out. Before I can drain it all, I gotta go inside and open a hot water faucet to allow the hot water to vent out. So the basic plan here is pretty straightforward. We're going to cut all this free. We're gonna reuse the lines coming in and hook up the new hybrid water heater, basically the same as this hot water heater is here. The only difference is we'll have to deal with a condensation line to get rid of the water from the AC unit on top of the water heater. In this situation, I just have to plumb the cold water into the tank and then the hot water out of the tank. And the main difference here is those connections are gonna be in a different part of the tank. In some situations, you have to put an expansion tank and do some other considerations, but in this region, the way this house is plumbed, I do not need to do that. So here we go. So I'm gonna drain this, cut it out, bring the new one in. Test this to see if it will drain at all. Hey, that's wide open. That's gonna be a slow drain. Okay, problem is this old tank has a bunch of crap in it. Okay, so I already have my first problem. I'm having a hard time getting this water tank to drain. And that is probably because this water heater has not really been maintained or anything. The water into the sink's relatively hard. So there's probably an accumulation of debris in the bottom of this tank blocking the drain inlet. So I think what I'm gonna do is try to come in from the top and siphon the water out. I'm gonna disconnect the electricity before I go any further. Now I've already cut off the power at the main breaker. Just have to disconnect these wires here. Okay, now that the wires are untwisted, I'm going to just take this whole piece out here. And that should come up. Just disconnect. There's a ground in here we gotta disconnect too. And just disconnect this and then we will be good and then for safety i'll just go ahead and put these back on for the time being okay someone should turn the breaker back on by accident so i'm going to try to go through here break this free this might be the anode so we'll get to see what the anode looks like so i'm going to pop that i'll make a hole and i can stick a hose in there and then siphon it out so Okay, so this won't budge, and that's what happens if you don't replace the anodes. They get kind of corroded and almost welded in place. So I'm just going to try to break free one of these other fittings, and then maybe we can get down through there. So I'll probably start with the hot water side, cut this free, go down and try to send them through here. So for the fittings at the top of this tank, I'm just going to use a crescent wrench, and then their compression fittings, so I'm just going to break them free. Now, I let the hot water heater sit a couple days without any power to it, so the water's still warm in here, but it's not scalding hot. So you gotta be careful with a freshly unplugged hot water heater because the water will stay hot for several days. Now that this is free, we can probably try to break this free. For the sake of time, I am gonna go ahead and open this up. I hooked the hose up. We know some water's coming out of here, so I am gonna open it up and let it kind of trickle out because for some reason they get stalled or something eventually this water will come out it's just coming out real slow It'll probably take a few hours just a tiny bit and take forever okay so what i'm going to do is just cut off this hot water pipe here there we go I'll take this fitting up too just using a screwdriver to try to pry this crap out once I get all that stuff out, I should have a hole. I'm gonna put a tube down there to siphon. And take off this fitting too, just using a crescent wrench to break the compression nut. And now I can handle this now, and I think I can lift this up. Okay, that was our, so our cold water line is free, so both the cold and the hot water are free now. Okay, so what I'm gonna try to do is snake this skinny hose down the water heater to start a siphon. goes so there we go I basically filled this hose with water and I dropped it down in the tank and we got a siphon so now I 
have some more water coming out, although it's still not a lot of water. It's going to take a while, so I'm going to let it sit for a while to drain before I can maneuver that tank. So I got a siphon started, and I've got the trickle drip going down out of the bottom drain. But regardless, there's not a lot of water coming out really fast. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while. I imagine it's going to take at least an hour, if not longer, before this is drained enough where I can move this old water tank out of the way. So I'm going to go do some other things and then come back. So I let this drain for about two hours, siphon it from the top and let it trickle out the bottom. Now it feels light enough, relatively speaking, that I should be able to manhandle it out of here. So double check everything is no longer attached. And this can be better. So now I'm going to try to loosely get this in place to figure out how I want to plumb everything. But the question is, can I pick it up, put it on the drain pad, and then position it? Let's see. So I have the water heater roughly in place where I want it. I want to have access to this and I want to have access to these. So it's sitting in a pretty good spot. It's a little bit off the wall, it's a little bit off this wall. So I think that's a good spot. I've got it sitting in the drain pan the way I want it. Now the trick is, is to get the cold line down to the cold water inlet and the hot line to the hot water inlet. Then I need a thread fitting in here and pipe out the condensation line. So for the condensation fitting, I'm going to plumb from here to here. This was the old purge valve line. So that's going outside the house. So I can use that. Just go from here to here. This is the purge valve here. For now, I'm just going to run a pipe down into the drain pan and I may plumb that a little differently down the road, but for now that will be fine. So again, the trick is from getting plumbing from here to these two fittings. And I'm going to start by connecting some fittings that go from metal to CPVC first. And I'll start by wrapping the threads with some Teflon tape. Teflon tape. I'll wrap around probably, I don't know, four to six wraps. Sorry, I'm trying to hold this and do it at the same time. I'm gonna wrap it clockwise. So now I'm gonna take the CPVC to the metal fitting and go ahead and thread that on in this case, the hot water inlet. I'm going to start right by hand. And then once it gets tighter, I will use a crescent wrench. Let's snug it down with the crescent wrench. And now we can build out from there with CPVC. Do the same thing down here. This is the cold water inlet. This is a threaded fitting for the condensation relief. This is the water that's come off of the AC unit. Basically the humidity is going to condense on the coils in here and it needs to go somewhere and drip out. So in this case they have a plastic fitting. So I'm going to go with a plastic or CPVC fitting. I'm going to hand thread that in there and then I'm going to just put a little bit of silicone on the edge threads. I'll do that now. Take it. Just hand tight it. And tighten it, and it gave me a little bit of silicone on there. To help seal it up. And then finally, for the purge valve plumbing, I'm going to use the same thing. This is a male fitting. I went ahead and put a little Teflon tape on it. Just going to hand thread this one to start. Then I'll come back with the crescent wrench a few times and tighten it down. This is very well, if this is working right, this will very rarely be used. And for now, I'm just going to run a pipe straight down into the pan. And I may divert that a little bit better later, but for now, that should work. So now I have all my pipe fittings ready to go and I can attach CPVC to them. So essentially what I'm going to do is build out the plumbing to be able to fit into these fittings. I'm going to cut the pipe with basically PVC, CPVC cutters and I'm going to cement the pipe with using primer, which is usually purple stuff you find in a hardware store, and then CVP cement. Some people get confused and we'll get PVC cement, and for this, we're using CPVC. We want to use CPVC cement. 
So I'm just gonna build all that stuff, connect it, and we'll be good to go. I cut the pipe, make a mark with my finger, put the blade up to it, and then start pinching. And then pinch, and then the knife locks. Pinch again, pinch again, pinch again. Boom, nice clean cut. All right, so in this particular joint here, I am using a 45 and a coupling. And to glue those together, we are going to use a little primer first, do a little bit on the outside, and then some on the inside as well. Then we'll take our glue, nasty stuff, some on the outside and then some on the inside as well and we simply push it together sting it down hold it for 10 seconds or so and then I like to and I like to wipe off the excess because it will continue to eat at the pipe and so that's how we join our CPVC pipe with the primer and the sealant. So I'll do that for every joint. Okay, so I'm about to make my last connection to the water heater. This is a cold water inlet. This is pumped all the way up to the hot water line. Just need to put some glue on here, put those together, start a little primer. I got the fan on to, for ventilation. This stuff's pretty potent. And there it is back there. So we've got the last connection. This is the connection to the hot water. The hot water out here. I just got to make this connection here and we'll have a nice closed loop here. I'm going to use the primer first. Glue. Put it in. And hold it again for about 10 seconds or so. Pump the excess, and we are connected. So now the water heater is completely plumbed. I've got the cold water tied in down there at the cold water inlet. The hot water outlet is here, going in here. I have the condensate line going outside through an old outside pipe and I have the purge valve down into the overflow tank right now. So the next step is to wire this thing up for power. Unfortunately, the cable that provided power to the existing water heater will work just fine for this. So I'm going to connect that in there now. You know, before opening this up and doing any electrical connections, again, I wanna double check and make sure that the breaker is off to this circuit. So we don't get shocked. We're going to open this up and wire this in. Okay, so to get into this, we have to remove this tape. This tape basically says do not turn this on until you have this tank full of water. And actually, I think it says don't even wire it up until you have water. I'm going to go ahead and wire it up. and I'm not going to flip the breaker until I fill this up with water. So I unscrewed these and then this just pops out and that gives us access to our wires. I decided I'm going to listen to the instructions. I'm going to go ahead and start filling the water tank before I hook up. The connections now in order to do this I'm just going to turn the water in here that's the cold water in then i'm going to open a hot water faucet in the house and that will allow all the air to escape out and fill this up and then i will go ahead and turn the hot water off when water starts coming out then it's going to be nice and filled so you can hear it filling now but i gotta go open a valve first thing i'm going to do with the electric wires this is my existing wiring coming from the house for the old water heater and I can reuse all of this. It's the right size wiring and circuit. So I'm just going to slide this thing on and then the little nut and screw this down and secure that plate on there. And now what I'm going to do is connect the ground. I'm just going to come up through this little edge here and then loop it around. That. Screw it down. Okay. 
Now that these are nice and tight, I'm going to shove them back down in here and then slide this cap in. Okay, so now we're all wired up in. Everything's plumbed up. The tank is filled. I think I can go flip the breaker and see what happens. It says disabled. Hopefully this will... Okay. So there we go, it is running, it is in heat pump mode. That means I'm putting heat in the water while pushing cold air out. So I'm getting a little AC benefit right here and it feels great in this hot, humid environment I'm in right now. So I'm curious to see overnight how cool the actual garage gets. So thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and why not subscribe? I'm Joe Kistel.